Hi, I'm Bradley Barth from SC Media here at Walmart headquarters, and my guest is Jason O'Dell. He is Vice President of Cybersecurity Operations at Walmart with a specialization in cyber threat intelligence, uh, red, blue, purple teaming, cyber hunting, uh, and uh, incident response. And uh, today I'm going to be asking Jason some questions that are inspired by Sam Walton's 10 Rules of building a better business. So, Jason, I'm glad you could uh, join us today. Uh, for starters, uh, we went through a ransomware incident response scenario. Um, just explain a little bit about um, just the, the, the purpose of, of showcasing this for us today. Sure, and so one of the things we were looking at doing at is identifying ways that we could drive value and understanding how different teams within a security operations center would work together. Um, and so we did the overview and description of the various teams, uh, but by providing a simulation, uh, we thought it would be a great opportunity to see how all the teams provide inputs and outputs to each other. So an example of that is how cyber intelligence will provide TTPs, tactics, techniques, and procedures over to our security operations center so they can write detections. Yeah, and that really uh, falls nicely with uh, a couple of the uh, philosophies espoused by Sam Walton. Rule four is communicate as much as you can to your partners. And rule seven is listen to everyone in your company. And the truth of the matter is, is that uh, especially in a complex organization like Walmart, uh, any kind of a, a threat like ransomware or anything that uh, requires an incident response, there's going to be multiple stakeholders and everybody has a role. So really having um, the, the proper communication and being able to uh, share actionable information quickly uh, is key. And that seems to be a very high priority uh, here at uh, the Walmart security operations. Yeah, no, that's correct. And I think during the simulation, um, you probably noted that even though we did go through the simulation a little bit linearly, um, the reality is the inputs and outputs from the teams would be happening simultaneously. And so cyber intelligence, as an example, would feed over to the security operations center. Incident response would be feeding the TTPs or the IOCs, the indicators of compromise that they observe from the threat actor over to the cyber intelligence team. And it really was a, a good way to see how those teams interconnect and work together. We talked a little bit today, too, about uh, the uh, the red teaming and the purple teaming that goes on within the organization. Uh, I thought an interesting point that was uh, brought up uh, during the exercise was the idea that um, the, the people that worked on the, the red team originally for Walmart were almost, in a way, um, outsiders, and they were essentially brought into the organization uh, because you found that actually having the more uh, close-up access to the, uh, the other teams really allowed you to do more uh, purple teaming, which ultimately in the end was maybe more productive than just keeping the red team isolated. Explain some of the uh, the principles behind that. Yeah, no, happy to. So we brought the red team into the security operations center um, to help bring the teams together so they could work more closely together. Um, and so when you have the red team on one side and the blue team on the other side, so red team being the attackers, the blue team being the defenders, and you bring them together, it's a concept known as purple teaming. And one of one of our discoveries um, is we brought those teams even more closely together as there was more transparency and more communication and they were driving each other to become better, which was very important to us. Um, in addition, it gave the red team the opportunity to work more closely with our cyber intelligence team. And so the cyber intelligence team will feed them TTPs from real-world threat actors, and then the red team can use those TTPs to emulate those real-world threat actors as part of the campaigns they conduct um, from an adversary emulation perspective against the organization. The discussion that we had during the actual ransomware uh, emulation or scenario uh, involved the, the teams that were uh, at the heart of the security operations center. But as we all know, when there's a fairly serious incident response, then there are even more stakeholders. You actually have to, it becomes a business decision even sometimes how you react, and you have to bring in uh, other departments that could range from uh, legal to, uh, to risk and compliance. And so do you have even a more expanded uh, playbook in terms of uh, communicating some of the more uh, elevated threats to these uh, organizations that are outside of the SOC? Yeah, we absolutely do. So the simulation today was encompassing just the technical piece of how those teams would respond together. But assuredly, um, you know, working outside of the simulation, if we were to encompass well, all the stakeholders um, that would be involved, it would be our legal team, our privacy team, the business owners, um, and others across the organization. 
Uh, rule six of Sam Walton is celebrate your successes. And so I'm wondering, is there a particular uh, incident response um, in the last, uh, let's just say, uh, year or two, a recent example that you're particularly proud of, even if you maybe can't share all the nitty gritty details of it? Uh, is there is there one particular success that uh, we can celebrate here today? You know, I think one of the things that um, we can share back um, about the success story and, and is the giving back to others. If you look at what we've done, um, you know, from an open source project perspective, um, we've contributed significantly to a couple of open source projects to give back to the community. One of those is Viper Monkey, uh, the other one's Atomic Red Team. And as we discussed a little bit today, um, as we were going through the tour and the simulation, our cyber intelligence team also, uh, based on the research that they do, uh, both both using Viper Monkey and outside of that um, are able to provide back to the community, uh, which in turn makes us all better. And uh, I've got one more rule for you, and that is rule 10, which is swim upstream. Uh, so basically, you know, defying convention and pushing the envelope. Uh, and so uh, I'd be curious to hear how, how, how you feel you're doing it in your department. Uh, one thing that springs to my mind, just again, based off of the scenario that we even had today in the discussion is just your uh, use of automation and really trying to innovate in that area. So not to give you an answer, but that's <laughs> but that's one area I was thinking of. I, I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Automation is a great example. Um, you know, if we look at the work that we've done over with Viper Monkeys, an example, and, you know, if you look at where we were analyzing potentially malicious files. Um, back in 2016, 2017, we're able to process through about 2,000 of those a year because there's a lot of manual work. Uh, fast forward today, looking at some of the processes we've created, um, the use of that open source project, we're able to process a little over 1 million files per year. And that is a significant contributor in our ability not only to protect this organization, but to share more broadly with the information security community. Well, thanks, Jason. I really appreciate it. That's Jason O'Dell, Vice President of Cybersecurity Operations at Walmart. I'm once again Bradley Barth from SE Media, reporting from Walmart headquarters. And until next time, have a safe day online.